What's up, folks? I'm Odd, by the way, and welcome back to uh, kind of like a fantasy character creation random role situation. But I have to show you something. I made a thing. <laughs> I made a thing. So this is a very simple program, but I have been practicing around with uh, Godot, just trying a new thing, really. I like making things, and I thought at some point or another I could try and make a game. I'm pretty far off from any of the more complex things that I'd want to actually do, but I made this, and I think that is really interesting and very useful, uh, very niche to my my standards, really. But yeah, as you see, it's a, it's a fantasy character roller. Uh, it has some some very like D and D inspired elements to it, like the classes are all basically D and D, but the the species are a little bit different, either simplified or I, I added a couple more. So basically, you can random roll either one character or two species that you can then hybridize that you can then hybridize together into the one character. So, if we were to say roll one character, four foot tall fighter that's Ganassi, they're a woman, and they have that skin tone. The skin tone is quite random, so you can definitely leave it out, but you can keep it in for a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and the hybrid, of course, just changes it to be human and orc. So that and comes in and we have another uh, little factor to add to our thing. So this is a half orc, actually, quite quite typical, almost. The skin color actually works for it, too. Ten feet tall sorcerer, though. That is insane. <laughs> but yeah, I want to kind of, like, show you, too, what I made, like, what I did in Godot to do this. So, as you can see, this is kind of the game script, which is quite a lot. Uh, but basically, kind of what it is, is uh, only a couple of functions, really, right? So we, had our, we have our buttons here, right? And you can see on roll pressed, that's the roll button. A roll the one character. And then we've got, <laughs> we've got, for one, the character height is just a number. So that's going to be a random range before, between 4 and 10. I felt like that would be appropriate. And then... I just have it set so that the text that initially says height will then say, or that initially says none for height, will then say the character's height from a random range between 4 and 10, and then feet tall. And then it goes basically similarly for this, although in this case we have arrays, which are just sort of like lists of things. But the weird thing is, is that they're assigned to numbers, so you can still use this random number generator and get uh, a number from this array that is assigned to one of these words. So it's basically kind of like a, a zhuzhed up random number generator with a very select range of numbers that are named. <laughs> and you can see some of the options around here. There are 30 species, there's four gender options, there's 12 classes, and the random color one, this was the one that I definitely had to research a little bit. Like, some of this, most of this up here was based off of Bracky's Godot course, essentially. When I saw the arrays and then I saw the random number generator, I was like, well, hold on. <laughs> because I realized you could also change the text to something within this. And then why not just pull a number from that as well? So, it makes sense. In my brain, at least. I will say the interesting thing about this is that the first entry is not assigned one, but it's zero. So I actually had a very specific problem with gender, <laughs> where I accidentally made this range one to three. So you would never roll a man. And uh, other human errors included miscounting uh, these lists and accidentally putting in like one too many. And if the roller accidentally rolled that, then it wouldn't have anything to draw from and the game would crash. But yeah, that's just like my little, my little experiment that I did. And like, I know it's not much. I did like a little, I did a little background for it, as you can see, of course. And I have some, some text and some buttons and, and all this type of stuff that change color and all that. Like I tried to look at, make, make it look relatively nice. I do think it still kind of looks like a, like an early flash game which has its own charm in a way but i definitely need to figure out assets and making them a little bit better obviously 
But I mean, this was just for this small project and I just kind of wanted to zhuzh it up a little bit, you know, not make it that standard gray background. But yeah, I thought that maybe we would just roll a couple characters, take some screenshots, and try to make a little, like, assortment of characters. And I'm also going to, uh, I'll, I'll link it, actually, it's already up on Itch. If you want to grab it, it's just a download, only for Windows at the moment. Oh yeah, <laughs> hold on, let me see if I can't get another display capture in on here. So this, this icon right here, this little die, I made that, for one, but this was probably the most convoluted part of this damn process. <laughs> trying to figure out how to get the, um, the icons to work. And initially, I had the taskbar and the, uh, the little window icon there as well, and this wasn't showing up. And now this is showing up, and they're not showing up, so... I don't know, but whatever. I guess at least the desktop icon looks better now. <laughs> And I swear to God, when I first exported it, this, like, the icon didn't show up. And then I came back around a couple hours later, and I was like, well, let's try and, like, you know, try and run through the whole process of, of trying to make that icon again. Because I did it multiple times. And I, like, look over, and then I did a double take, because I was like, Dice, you're there! Like, how? You, you're there! But, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm definitely still a novice at this, but... I think that it is cool and exciting and generally just a fun time. So yeah, I thought that we would play around with my new thing that I made because the other things that I was using were not specific enough, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, I figured that we would roll maybe three characters as per usual. I will actually hold on. A lot of windows today. Okay, let's roll our first character though. Four foot tall, very short orc, who's a bard, and a woman, with a brown skin tone. Okay, I think that I could play with that. Very short orc. Very, very short for an orc. If you notice, I had a thing too, is that if you roll a smaller race, i.e. the halflings or dwarves, divide the height result by two. Or don't, I'm not your mom. Basically, because I made the range between, like, was it like three and ten? For the kind of more averagely heightened rate like species we then proceeded to realize that i needed something for the smaller <laughs> the smaller species and i didn't have that so my bad and i couldn't i couldn't program it and i tried doing some schmigaggling and maybe i'll try and figure it out with libraries or something later but this first iteration just divide by two even if it's four make your dwarf or halfling two foot tall <laughs> all right and we will roll our second character a six foot tall cleric halfling, so three feet. This is this is where this comes in. Three foot tall cleric halfling, a gender, skin tone is red. Obviously I know that these like the 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 gender presentations here that I've put are kind of vague. Um I, I feel it's a better classifier than nothing. Just basically this being a genderless character. Alright, grab this one. One more. And boop. <laughs> All right, a 10 foot tall rogue elf that's agender with a yellowish skin tone. I think that I'll definitely, um, I could definitely play around with the actual skin tones of these characters or just forego them altogether. Like if you want to make yourself like an extra challenge, you can, but this is completely random. This is based off of three random like RGB draws um, that create a random color. <laughs> And it's not, like, prettified or set to a certain saturation or value or anything like that. It's just random. It is the most random thing of this whole list. So definitely keep that in mind if you're doing a challenge like this. And maybe pick and choose whether or not you're going to stay true to the skin tone. If you're trying to be very true to form for, like, D&D &D or something like that, where they have, like, a race definition or a species definition then maybe you make them whatever. I did, like I said, make this kind of adjacent to D&D, &D, so the classes are all the same. But let me see if I can grab something. Yeah, like, okay, for the species, I both, like, extended and generalized a little bit. So I saw one character that was, like, called a hedge, and then another called something else, and they were both hedgehogs, so I just put hedgehog folk 
bird folk as opposed to like Arakakra or Kenkui, Kenkuri, however you pronounce that. The like like the eagle people or the raven people or the pigeon people, whatever. Like, just make it a bird person, <laughs> not bird person from Rick and Morty. I mean, you could, but just not. Just make it any bird that you want. I think that that's probably a better approach to it because people get all uppity about the the rules of the species and what they're supposed to look like and stuff like that if it's if it's specific. So, you know, why not just make a bird and go from there? <laughs> I think I also added in a dog folk. We have cat folk like tabaxi, rabbit folk, another rabbit folk. We do have giants. Maybe for giants you could uh you could double the height if you felt like it. <laughs> We do have merfolk, squirrel folk, um, got the shifters, part werebeast, deer folk. There was a there was a deer it was called like serve serve something, um, but that's just deer folk now. Yeah, I also added like a dog folk. I think that I have like, but I still have your like classic like dragonborn and stuff like that, and all those fun little uh, creatures, but. Anything that was kind of vague or kind of, like, um, restrictive was kind of expanded upon. And I also kind of, like, cut down on the doubles. So I think there's a dragonborn, but kobolds aren't necessarily there. Or lizard people. You know? That just... That whole thing. But yeah. So we've got our three characters rolled. And I will uh, also be drawing them. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my little presentation of the fun little toy that I made. And... You're free to go and download it on itch.io. It's free. Uh, I think there's a like a donation thing, but you just put in zero. So or, or leave a tip if you feel like it. I don't know. But <laughs> I hope that you like this. I figured that other people would find it useful as well because it's fairly specific. But I feel like people could do it. Like could 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 use it uh, in this way. And there's probably a bajillion of them either on itch or just on the internet in general that I just haven't found. But the opportunity to roll a hybrid specifically, like two characters in one go, also kind of appealed to me. I mean, obviously, I've done a lot of, like, non-human hybrids challenge challenges on this, so. Yeah, I really like this, and I think that it's exciting, and I just wanted to show you. But, on to the speed draw. On to the speed draw. <laughs> so first up, we have the four-foot-tall orc bard woman. I feel like the original thought of bards and orcs can be kind of a clash, but then you just have to think, well, what's orc music like? I think that it's some combination between metal and screamo. Not just noise core, I think that would be goblin music, but probably pretty elegant like metal is, just loud. I have, probably with the rest of the world, fallen in love with Delicious and Dungeon, or Dungeon Meshi, uh, and I love Yoko Kui's orcs so much. They further the kind of boar-like aspects in a really cool way that makes them feel more unique than just, like, green, flat-nosed human with tusks. I landed on a very punk-like design, complete with a torn shirt, spike collar, and belt, and of course the magical electric guitar, which I will get into later. She kind of gives me the vibes of that, like, rock troll antagonist from the second Trolls movie. I, I don't know what to do with that information, but I, I just- I just feel like it's there. She's not gatekeepy though, she just loves what she does. The horn she's throwing, by the way, actually underbite tusks. Yeah, it's an orc thing. Tieflings have a very similar gesture, but this is different, okay? <laughs> I decided to call her Screech. She's a generally loud, con confrontational bard, kind of eking toward barbarian, but she can still pull her weight magically too. Her satires and music can make a grown man cry, whether it's in emotion or agony, it's hard to say. <laughs> She always signs her name with an exclamation point. Yes, that is her name on all legal documents. Screech was born the smallest baby in her clan by a wide margin. She wasn't easily misplaced, though, because from day one, she was also the loudest baby, with a shrill cluck cry earning her, her name, Screech. Growing up, she never stopped being small, but she never stopped screaming, either. Despite her size, Screech was one of the most confident members of her clan. In the time of relative peace, she and the other young orcs fell into a new craze. Orc music. Orc music was a loud clash of the traditional war drumming and shrieking string instruments with the goal to make them louder. Louder! Screech's voice was perfect for the vocals and her lyrics enraptured crowds, mostly of her own clan and some other visiting orcs, but she had other goals. Stardom. Traveling the world with her bandmates and introducing the rest of the world to the beauty, the magic, that was orc music. But that all went wrong. One day, a horde of bandits attacked her clan. 
They had Goliaths, giants, other orcs, and generally a massive size in numbers that quickly overwhelmed her people. Screech was even more easily overpowered, and with no real means to help, her only other option was to run. Being far less noticeable to the larger assailants, she slipped back, far into the abandoned mines her clan had made their home generations ago. Then, as if by fate, she found an ancient dwarven artifact, hidden in the long-forgotten labyrinth. The axe. An instrument shaped into a weapon. Or perhaps the other way around? It had old runes on it that adjusted the sounds it made, its volume, despite not having any acoustic structuring to it at all. The relic seemed to bond with her, almost, employing her and teaching her how to use it. But there wasn't much to it for her. Her words, her music, they flowed perfectly into magic. With this, she thought she could go back and protect her people. But when she returned, there were, they were nowhere to be found. Either they had also fled, or Screech didn't want to think about it. She found some signs of the bandits and set out after them, determined to find out what happened to her clan. Either she was going to find what remained of them, or avenge them. Obviously, I had a lot of fun with this backstory. It felt like the perfect inciting incident for an orc to leave their home. And sometimes the peppy bard has just gotta ha be the one with the most hidden angst. The magic artifact being involved feels like it'd be it could kind of limit the bard's skill of like picking up any instrument or none at all. But I kind of wanted to allude to the guitar just teaching her so she could have that, you know, the magic was inside you all along arc. I just knew that she needed a magic electric guitar that amplified itself as her main weapon and was also an axe. And like... That pun, come on. <laughs>
and they learned of this god's true nature, a fierce protective force, the unadulterated rage for those unseen, unheard, the rage of never again. This god offered Flick their patronage, and newly hope hopeless and furious, Flick took it. A powerful surge of magic unbound them, and they grasped the whip which glowed with a new magical power. Armed, but inexperienced, Flick barely made it out of the territory, but swore to come back and take down the cult leader, and hopefully free their people. Shortly after, Flick stumbled into Screech. Screech, having newly left an entire life with other orcs, was weirdly ecstatic to meet someone shorter than her, let alone by a whole head. After hearing their story, Screech realized the two of them had something in common, the will to fight but the lack of strength to do it alone, and offered to help Flick on their quest to become stronger, given that she was on a similar one. Flick offered in turn to help Screech find her family. Screech was like everything Flick was raised to reject, but given their situation up to this point, maybe that was a good thing. They admire her greatly. I feel like every D&D campaign probably gets some cult action, but it's fun to me specifically to imagine a cleric who grew up in a cult and found out by having a chat with the actual god that cult was centered around. It just, it tickles me a little bit. <laughs> On to the last character, our agender, ten foot tall elf rogue. Little, uh, little conspicuous for a rogue to be ten feet tall. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed throughout, but I was trying to keep some of the aspects of the rogue color for the skin tone. And though I didn't use quite the same yellow provided, I did let it inspire me to play with some du with some fun duality. A goth high sun elf, the ones that are all golds and yellows. I also thought it would be funny if, along with being much taller than the other two characters, this elf was technically still in adolescence, basically a teen in a highly goth or emo phase, who was also like that kid that swore that they would grow up to be a ninja and just actually did it. <laughs> this is Sombergale, a self-declared name. I saw that, at least in D&D, elves may declare an adult name when they reach 100, so I imagine a lot of adolescents start trying out names when they're younger to seem more adult. I do not envy long-live races adolescence. No wonder Somber is so dour if puberty is like 25 years long. Somber goes by they, them, or fey fair, because it felt like that in particular would be popular among elves given their connection to the fey realm. My immortals don't give two shits about gender in my mind. It's all about the aesthetic. Also, like, maybe I'm way too in my head, but I feel like if you spend that long deliberating on yourself, Elf gender nuance has got to be like 5D chess levels compared to humans. Good for them, honestly. Tangents aside, lore. Somber Gale, or just Somber, or maybe just Gale if you know them really well, grew up among other sun elves. They were generally prescribed as the weird kid from day one, but embraced it over trying to hide it. In teendom, they began to eschew all things related to their species and society, disregarding all the stuffy trappings of a stagnant, slow society, and ran away off on Pharaoh. Somber's initial goal was to get by on hunting and the occasional stealing from bewildered campers. In one such instance, they came across Screech's camp only to find its inhabitants still awake and Screech performing. Elves and orcs, of course, have a regular history of tension, but for a young elf that sought to eschew everything elf, orc music was like a sign from the fates. Flick was quick to sense them and capture them before they could act. Suddenly, Somber Gale was indisposed by two creatures less than half their height. Somber was quick to, in their own way, praise Screech's music. Between their demeanor and lanky build, the two smaller adventurers immediately registered their thief as inexperienced and developmentally younger than them. 
They released Somber, who told himself that this was the two granting Somber's freedom in exchange for fair services. Not for ego purposes or anything. That was totally what happened. <laughs> Despite their tall frame, Somber is incredibly nimble and light-footed and impressive with a throwing knife, which was about all they currently had on their person at that time. Even though they're a teenager, 50 years of practice is still obviously substantial. Somber's relatively sheltered life comes out occasionally in slightly ignorant remarks, especially when describing Screech's music, but it generally comes from a good place. Despite neither having any parental instincts at all, Screech and Flick have effectively registered Somber as like their tall child in their minds. I feel like having these two co-parent uh, com a comparative giant would just be the best thing. It also makes me ship it just a little. <laughs> I still love the duality and hey, maybe it's not just a phase, mom. I don't think that the aesthetic is really limited to rebellious teens. It's just the more very like antithetical personality, the obstinance and the deep, deep teen on weed that are more what makes Sombra feel very young to me. <laughs> and maybe even the choice of running away to try and be a thief from relative comfort and privilege. I think that Sombra was well into kind of a rude awakening when they met Screech and Flick. And maybe things weren't necessarily all right at home. It doesn't need to be drastic for someone, especially someone young, to feel unheard and neglected. I could imagine Somber's parents being like overtly chipper and stuck in the past and not noticing or outright denying that their child is developing their own personality. I think Flick, given the whole unheard aspect of their patron, would actually have some nice words of wisdom for that. But those are my three characters from this week. Obviously a lot more lore this time around. I got excited when I finished my program and I wanted to play with it, so I started this earlier in the week than I usually did. Lots of time for my noggin to fall in love with these random characters. Seriously, I kind of want to write and draw more for them, which is always like the best feeling. Let me know what you think and feel free to check out my little character roller on, on itch.io if you so desire. Maybe let me know what craziness you rolled if you got the program. And of course you can subscribe for more fun and weird little art challenges and projects that I make in the future. At that though, I'm finally going to leave this here and I'll see y'all next time.